Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back for week nine of the GPC. We are finally back after a one week break and this video is going up one day late. This is because I was having trouble earlier in the week, if you guys did not already know, with Showdown and connecting to the servers. So me and Bluesy had to postpone our battle. Uh, if I didn't tell you, we are facing the Edinburgh Knights, uh, coached by Bluesy. Uh, the first person that I spoke to from the GPC that was not in the NBA, actually, person that uh, checked me out, uh, spoke to me before allowing me to replace Rob in the league. So this is going to be the first time that we're playing. I'm just going to go over his team really quickly. Uh, he has, what does he have? Let's see here. He has Victini, Mega Gyarados, Mamoswine, Roserade, Florgis, Drudagon, Gligar, Magneton, and Hitmonchan. So my thought process this game is he has a lot of great wall breakers in Victini, Mega Gara, Mamoswine, and I would even go as far as saying Roserade. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a team where I would have sufficient walls for his offensive threats, uh, mainly, of course, being the four that I mentioned, and also have a lot of offense to back it up. So I have four roughly defensive mons and two offensive mons. That's, that's typically how I like to build a balanced team. Have uh, four mons that are good defensively, can also do things offensively, and then have two really powerful Pokemon. So the first Pokemon we have here is Tweety R Zapdos. We're rocking Volt Switch for initiative on Pokemon such as the Florges, uh, the Mega Gyarados to be able to hit it for quad super effective damage if he doesn't Mega Evolve and super effective damage if he does. We have uh, we can uh, Volt Switch on the Dredagon, uh, get out against the Magneton, which is nice, and do some good damage to the Hitmonchan, which I don't believe is coming this game. It shouldn't, but uh, it might. You never know. Uh, next we have HP Ice, because I want to be able to hit Roserade and Gligar for super effective damage. Uh, I, I, opt I was considering uh, running Air Cutter, uh, specifically for the Roserade, but I didn't think that he would want to stay in on me anyway because of the threat of Heat Wave. Uh, but I also wanted something that could hit Gligar for quad effective damage, so there's that. Uh, then we have Roost, uh, because I do need to get back my health if he manages to set up Hazards, and be able to defog them away because uh, hazards from his side could be very annoying. He does have a Stealth Rocker in Mamoswine. He has a very good Spiker in Roserade, so I gotta be very careful. He's one of the only other teams in our division that can actually spike stack me, so gonna be, have to be careful with that. EV spread is optimized to be able to take hits from Roserade. As you can see, we're rocking Safety Goggles so that we can switch in on it, uh, on a Sleep Powder, potentially. The 104 speed with the Timid Nature is enough to outspeed uh, Gyarados before a Dragon Dance so that we can get a Volt Switch on it and go into an appropriate Pokemon afterwards. Uh, 60 in Special Attack is uh, just a little bit extra of extra power. I put that mainly for Gligar so that I could 2-hit KO even a specially defensive uh, variant. Uh, well, most of them. Most of the time I 2-hit KO, so that's, uh, that's why that's there. Next up, we have Jumbled Mess Arklefki. Uh, I wanted to be able to spike stack Bluesy as well, so I decided to go with this. We actually don't have a Stealth Rocker. Uh, we do have a Stealth Rocker this week. What am I saying? Uh, <laughs> sorry, forget that. Um, I wanted to be able to spike stack alongside him if it came down to that, uh, because his team takes a lot more damage from hazards than mine does as a result of uh, me having uh, two Pokemon, two to three Pokemon actually that are off the ground, and I also have a Pokemon with Regenerator, so it affects me a little bit less. Um, Flash Cannon is there so that I can actually hit the Mamoswine back, as you can see we're an Air Balloon variant so that I can switch in on Mamoswine if it decides to go for an Earthquake or a knockoff. I have Magnet Rise to prevent it from hitting me for super effective damage. Uh, when I had a test game against Jose, he was actually, um, Icicle, uh, Icicle Plate I think it is? Yeah. Uh, so that thing was actually hitting me pretty hard regardless, so we have to have something to hit it, which is Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon also allows me to hit the, uh, Dredagon, allows me to hit the Hitmonchan decently well. Uh, pretty much everything uh, takes either neutral damage or is a resist, like he has Victini, but I also wanted to be able to hit Florges, uh, potentially get some special defense drops. Spikes are there, of course, like I said, spike stacking. Thunder Wave is there because if Mega Gyarados gets out of control, I can always T-Wave it, and uh, spreading status across his team is not a bad thing. If it comes down to it, Scarf Victini, if I have to T-Wave that, I will. Uh, so that's, that's why that's there. That's why we're running this set, Jumbled Mess this week coming. Next up, we have GLG. Now, this is a wall... Uh, I didn't explain. Uh, yeah, I did, kind of. Mamoswine is walled, in, by, in for the most part, by Klefki because we are a max defense variant. This Entei is built to take on Victini. So I decided to go to the max HP, max defense variant with a uh, an impish nature because I wanted something to be able to switch in on banded V creates. This thing can take two, no problem. Uh, able to stone edge for a lot of damage on the Victini. We have another course of action against that thing if it gets out of control. But uh, as you probably know, 
V create lowers your speed. So if he's choice banded, he will ultimately be slower than me and I'll be able to stone edge him twice and knock him out. We have Will-O-Wisp on this set because we want to be able to catch the Mamoswine or the Gyarados or the Florges or the Gligar, pretty much anything that would normally switch into Entei uh, and be able to, uh, to burn it. Uh, Sacred Fire also does that job. And we have Roar on here because I don't want to get caught off guard by a sub Dragon Dance Mega Gyarados and not be able to do anything against it. I want to be able to get it out and then continue my game plan. So that's that's why that's that way. And the 20 speed here is to be able to outspeed a 4 speed modest Magneton so that I can actually come in on it after a kill and threaten it out and potentially get a burn with Sacred Fire. So that's that. Next up we have CTCR Uxie. Uh, this is our Stealth Rocker. I was saying before that we didn't have one, but we do. Uh, so this is a purely utility set. Now what's great about this Uxie is that it outspeeds Gyarados just as Zapdos does. Has 144 speed with a Jolly Nature, able to outspeed the Gyarados before a Dragon Dance, Thunder Wave it, and if he Mega Evolves I can go for a U-Turn for super effective damage following that up, and then just go into something such as Klefki or uh, Jose brought a uh, Stone Edge variant against me, which I expect if he does bring the Gyarados, because otherwise he can't hit um, Zapdos hard enough to Oko it. So I do expect that. Heal Bell is here because I can't allow anything to get poisoned and not get rid of the poison. It's very important that I get rid of any possible status on my team. Uh, as I said before, he does have a Roserade which can Toxic Spikes. He has a Florges that can Toxic. He has a Gligar that can Toxic. Uh, he has just so many status options, especially Toxic though. Uh, throughout his team, so I have to be very careful with that. That's why we're running Heal Bell. The rest I put into HP and Defense so that we can actually take a hit from Mega Gyarados, potentially. I think plus one doesn't knock me out, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna have to run that calc during the game if it comes down to it. But like I said, we're faster than Gyarados before Mega Evolution. That's probably the most important speed tier because it also outspeeds Mamoswine, Defensive Roserade, Florges, Drudagon, Gligar, Magneton, and Hitmonchan. All of them. All of them. His fastest Pokemon is Victini. So... We can capitalize on that. Our next Pokemon here is Rob. This is one of the two offensive threats I was talking about. We have a Focus Sash Mean Shao with Regenerator. Now, this is a very interesting set. Uh, I forget what the HP investment on there is for. It's probably there just because I didn't have anywhere else to put it. But we have 252 attack. We are 216 in speed. This is faster than his fastest Pokemon, Victini. Now, what happens if his uh, Gyarados gets up a Dragon Dance and I can't T-Wave him because Clefki's gone? Uh, I can't roar him out because he's going to knock me uh, knock me out. He has the Stone Edge. I've already scouted for it. What do we do? We go into Mean Shao. We live a hit thanks to Focus Sash. We hope not to get flinched from Waterfall, and we click High Jump Kick and knock him out. Knock Off is there so that I can get rid of Gligar's item early if it's an EV Light variant. Awesome. Get rid of that. Cool. Florges' leftovers would be great. Rosary takes a ton from knockoff, even a defensive variant, it takes a little over half. U-turn uh, might be able to clean it up afterwards. High jump kick as well, depending on damage rolls. And fake out is there because I want something to be able to scout out moves. Uh, break sashes. This is also my counter lead to a sash from Amoswine. I can go for a fake out on turn one and then just high jump kick him. If he brings protect, then he brings protect. There's not much I can do about that. But I can also I'll always fake out into U-turn uh, into my cleft key. Uh, and then just start setting up spikes or go for a flash cannon, depending on what I want to do, or magnet rise, of course, if I'm in front of a mammoth swine. So that's Mean Shao's set. Mean Shao pretty much won me the game when I had a test game, so hopefully it'll be able to come through as well as it did there. And our final Pokemon is 4chan, the Mega Gardevoir, coming back again. Now this is another Pokemon that can put in a tremendous amount of work. I recently discovered something in the GPC, which is that you do not have to Mega Evolve on the first turn that you come in. So... That's really interesting because I can keep Mega Gardevoir's traceability. What that allows me to do is I can come in on Magneton if it's a, um, if he brings it, of course, and if it is a Magnet Pull variant. I have enough speed to outspeed max speed Magneton if I know that he's not scarfed, of course. Uh, I'll be able to see his ability because of trace. And I'll also be able to outspeed him and knock him out with a hidden power ground as long as he's not sturdy, like I said. So, we'll be able to Mega Evolve, go for the Hidden Power Ground, we'll have our Mega Evolution. Again, we'll be faster than most of his team. I decided not to speed tie with Victini because I have a decent switch in Entei every single time to a, uh, a Flare, uh, to a V-Create, excuse me. So, I decided let's just go faster than everything else. I, I just speed crept Roserade. So, we're at 308, Roserade hits 306. If you guys see here, it doesn't go to 307 it's it jumps from 306 to 308 so that's why we're running this nature if i run a modest nature i cannot outspeed roserade at all so this is definitely the set i'm going with 
and protect is here so that I can see if he is choice banded or choice scarfed on anything I can always scout to see what he's locking himself into and this also allows me to um, to get off a of mega evolution for free against the Roserade without having to worry about the sludge bomb so I'm actually about to have our uh, we're actually about to have our game right now that's why I kind of sped through this but I'm gonna pause it guys we will be right back and you're gonna get to see the battle so here we go okay so I just finished having the battle this is gonna be a post com guys because um, I don't like having a live comm at the same time as a team builder in the same video which you guys saw when we played Lars I split it up into two videos or else it would be too long and it's it's kind of difficult to watch uh, a video that long I understand that uh, from a viewers perspective so we're gonna do it this way so we have the matchup here as you can see Blue Z brought Gligar, Magneton, Roserade, Victini, Gyarados, and Drudagon. The second I didn't see Florges, I was ecstatic. I was so happy. I'm like, yes, this is going to be a lot easier now because I have a hard time breaking that thing. So let's let's just jump right into it because even though I just finished having the game, a lot of things are still very blurry. Um, and a lot of things are going to come into um, into the light about League Format uh, and how I play League Format when you guys are going to watch this match. I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play and uh, you're going to see I actually had a piece of paper for the first time. I had a piece of paper in front of me and I was taking down my opponent's sets and I would refer back to it and I would be like, okay, well this has this item. No, wait, no, this is a different item. So basically, let's get into it. We lead off with Mega Gardevoir as our opponent leads off here. I'm going to move this to, snor uh, to normal because this is way too slow. Uh, leads off with Victini. Now, I want to keep my trace ability here. I could have very well gone for the Mega Evolve and protected very easily just to scout what he was going for. But I felt like it was a better idea just to uh, right off the bat switch out into our dedicated counter to Victini, which is Entei. So, my opponent is going to go for a U-turn. I expected a U-turn turn 1, and I calc the damage. Now, this is very important, guys. It did 6%. I calc the damage, and I saw that he was not banded. Could not be banded in any circumstance. So, unless he was running, like, no attack investment minus nature banded, which doesn't make any sense. But he's not banded from that damage. So, he's going to go into Gligar. And here's what I mean by the... Uh, the repercussions of playing league format come in i miss a will-o-wisp on turn one on this thing and that's really annoying but i'm gonna hit my next one he gets a brox as you can see i'm gonna hit my next will-o-wisp and here is gliger is gonna click earthquake look at that damage D did you guys see that it's 25 percent that that just did to us that's uncommon damage that should ne never do that much from a gliger this gliger is max attack like full out max attack that should never do more than 18 percent so right off the bat i know this thing is max attack and uh then i'm gonna see on the following turn that he outspeeds me as i go for a roar which makes perfect sense i'm just trying to cycle him out of his ponds <laughs> just wanted to psych you guys out there so we're gonna roar out the roserade he's gonna go into magneton now i know i'm gonna take a heavy hit from this thing but i calc unless he specs i'm not taking too much damage to the point where i'm worried so I just decide to fire off a Sacred Fire right here. It's going to do 60%, which I didn't calc at the moment. So he goes for Thunder Wave. Right away, I know he's not choiced because he went for Thunder Wave. So I'm like, okay, this isn't too bad. We're just going to switch out. We're going to go into Uxie. I should be able to eat up the hit. And then he goes for Volt Switch and does a ton of damage. And for the longest time, I couldn't understand why. And I was trying to figure out this Magneton set. I'm like, is he Zap Plate? Zap plate modest? Why did that do so much? And a bunch of calcs keep coming back later in the game, and I'm like, why is this Magneton doing so much damage to my team? And I end up realizing later in the game that I ignored the fact that my Sacred Fire only did 60% to a Magneton. Even uninvested Entei's Sacred Fire is a guaranteed knockout on anything other than Eviolite. So I knew he couldn't be Zap plate had I calc that. So, the entire game, I'm trying to figure out what this Magnezone is. All I know is that it's not choiced. That's the greatest thing for me. Here, Victini is going to come in. I know I can live a, uh, a V Create or, and a U turn, so I'm going to decide. Let me get up my rocks. Probably the best decision that I made the entire game. You guys are going to see why later. 
So, Gligar's in. I know that I'm faster than this. I can go for a heal bell. And he's just gonna go for a U-turn. U-turn, that's fine. I'm assuming that he's max attack and max HP at this point because of all the damage that he did to both Yuxi uh, and Entei. Magneton's gonna come back in. I no longer have a very good switch into this thing, but I have no choice. I'm gonna click U-turn. I don't have anything else to damage this, and I want a little bit more damage on it. Another great decision on my part, as you guys will see. Magneton's going to just simply Volt Switch out. Perfectly fine. It's gonna get out of here. He's gonna go into the threat. <laughs> Victini is back. <clears throat> and I know that this thing is uh, not banded. And we're gonna find out here. I'm assuming this thing is Scarfed. It has to be Scarfed. There's no way it's not Scarfed. He goes for Bolt Strike. Hits me. And I can see that he's adamant. Choice Scarf. So here I'm just gonna go fire off a Stone Edge. And we are going to miss another move from Entei. Love it, GLG. Geo, you're coming in uh, clutch right now. Totally not. But I'm going to switch into Klefki on the Bold Strike. Should be able to take it relatively well. We are max defensive. And he paralyzes me. And the luck doesn't stop there. As he's going to switch out into Magneton. I am going to get full parried. And then I'm going to go for my first layer of spike. Thankfully. As he goes for a Volt Switch. Knocks me down to 9%. And we are going to be able to get up a second layer of spike. Now why, why did I decide to get up a second layer of spike? <clears throat> First off, Klefki lives rocks, so I don't have to worry about um, about dying to hazards, right? Uh, I can keep this for later to Thunder Wave his Gyarados, for example. However, um, <laughs> I don't want to uh, I don't want to risk this Roserade setting up a spike on me and me losing my Klefki for absolutely no reason, because my sack here would have been Entei because it's at 25%. And also, if you noticed, the Magneton is now sitting at 23%, and on showdown, what that means is that it's at 22%. So, that indicates to me that with two spikes up and stealth rocks, Magneton dies. And that's extremely important because that Magneton is a free sack for him, basically, right? Uh, he, can, he can go into it on any one of my slower mons and just destroy them. Not that I have anything slower, actually, than his Magneton, but maybe he's thinking that. So, it's gonna come in clutch, and you guys will see. Uh, in a bit, but I'm going to uh, set up a second layer of spike here as my opponent is just going to energy ball me uh, And I see that he's leftovers So I calc this up and I see that mean Shao can live an energy ball It can live a sludge bomb. It can live anything like that, but ultimately I decide let's go into Gardevoir I know he's not gonna be expecting the protect and I know that he speed crept my Gardevoir before mega evolution So I'm gonna click protect to make sure I outspeed you guys aren't gonna see it in the chat because we're a little more zoomed in than usual uh, But he says what does he say here? Uh, he says no, because <laughs> he wasn't expecting the protect. We're gonna get off to Psy Shock on the Rose Raid. It is gonna be able to knock it out. And here Victini comes in. Another important reason why rocks and spikes are crucial here. This Victini can no longer switch in. If I only had if I had only gotten up one spike, it would have had two switch ins. Right now, it only has one. So I know that this thing is choice scarfed. In my head, it is 100% scarfed. There's nothing else it could be. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna click protect to scout what he goes for. Goes for a bolt strike, it's his best play. I'm gonna keep my Entei, and this is important. He goes for another bolt strike, luckily does not paralyze me. I go for the hidden power ground, and we're able to knock out the Victini. That is the only move that I had. I was about to sub that out for HP Ice, for Gligar actually, and last minute I decided if he brings the Magneton, and I want something to hit Victini as well, but specifically if he brings the Magneton and it's, um, it's Magnet Pull, I want to be able to capitalize on that and just get a free knockout. So I decided to keep hitting power ground. Thank goodness I did, because had I not, I would have had to go into Mean Shao there and break my sash. And this is very important. Now, Bluezy is a phenomenal player. Guys, please check him out in the description down below if you get a chance to. Uh, he's a an awesome player. He made probably one of the most predictable yet ingenious moves right here i go for protect predicting a sucker punch what does bluesy do he clicks gunk shot next turn i'm gonna click hyper voice as he sucker punches because there's nothing else i can do so that's gonna be that now this dreadicon is a huge problem right now i know i'm pausing a lot but this battle isn't too long and i really want to explain to you guys what was going through my mind right here so entei is dead Yuxi is super weak. Zapdos comes in at like 6% after rocks. Zapdos only gets one switch. And 
I know that this thing is offensive, just from the way that he, he's like showing off his moves right now. Gunk shot, sucker punch, it has to be offensive. There's nothing else it could be. So what I'm going to do here is I bring up my calc, and I'll even bring it up for you guys here. And I'll show you Mean Shao versus, um, versus Drudagon. A max HP, max attack set. So I didn't calc for max defense. I calc'd for max HP, max attack, because I was convinced that's what he was. So right here, I can see, uh, without the life orb, which he hasn't shown because he didn't take life orb recoil on Sucker Punch, uh, he does only 30% to me. So he can't knock me out of Sash, which is perfect. Regenerator always gives me back my Sash. And Fake Out into U-Turn, if you can see right here, the Mineral combined does 36%. How much is he at? 72. So that means that after two consecutive rounds of fake out into U-turn, this Drudagon will die. So what are we going to do? We're going to click fake out. We get 14, so that confirms my suspicion that he's not fully defensive. And we're going to go for U-turn, get a 25 roll. Perfect. Going to sack off Entei here. This is why keeping this thing was important, because now I'm going to be able to rinse repeat go for a fake out again however i'm extremely scared right now <laughs> because if for some reason bluesy decides to switch into his gyarados right here i lose 100 percent of the time i lose this game he he has it in the bag because i do not have a rock move i can't hit that thing for super effective damage if it decides to stay in regular and you'll see later that he was also packing a move that would have influenced whether or not i would have been able to uh to break him so i'm gonna resume here he does stay in, luckily, and we are able to get off the fake out. Thank goodness. And now we're going to be able to U-turn. And the reason I wanted to do this series of plays is because I wanted to be in with Zapdos when he brought in whatever Mon was coming out next. Because I knew Magneton was dead to hazards. This was very important. Again, uh, I knew that Gl uh, Gligar would go down to HP Ice plus Burn plus Rocks. And I knew that Gyarados would not want to take an electric move in regular. Now, when I switched into Zapdos right here, and it came in at 9%, excuse me, I said 6 before. When it came in at 9%, and Magneton died to the hazards, and <laughs> Bluesy even said oops in the chat, which was funny. Uh, he brings in his Gyarados here, and I immediately thought I had lost right here. Why, guys? Because Gyarados gains a huge boost in special defense when it mega evolves and i know this because i watch mega mogwai and i remember him saying that and i've been using mega gyarados a little more often lately and i know that it gets that huge boost so i know that if he mega evolves he doesn't um he doesn't uh excuse me he doesn't die from my volt switch and i don't have thunderbolt i don't have anything stronger than volt switch so if he goes for a dragon dance right here i lose my sash is broken on mean Shao right now what am I to do? So, I have no choice. I know that I'm faster than his Gyarados before Mega Evolution, before Dragon Dance, excuse me. So, I have to defog. I have to defog right here, no matter what. And luckily, we get off the defog, and Bluesy goes for a substitute, which is perfect. I am going to be able to click Volt Switch on the following turn, and I can just freely go into Mean Xiao here because I know that even if he hits me, I have the Focus Sash. He goes for a Dragon Dance. I also have the Focus Sash. I need to dodge a flinch right here. First, I need to go for Fake Out because my best play is to Fake Out into U-Turn. 100% of the time, Fake Out flinches him and U-Turn knocks him out afterwards. Uh, I would see from the Fake Out damage if he was a little more defensive than I was thinking, uh, than from what the calc showed me. But I had to... Uh, I had to try it. I had to go for fake out. There was no reason not to and if it did a lot less than I was expecting Then I would just go for high jump kick again. It's it's playing off of luck, but I go for fake out do 13 That's perfect. I can go for u-turn now He goes for waterfall and luckily after all those misses after all those paras after everything We do not get flinched and sashed mean Xiao coming in clutch we're gonna switch into our zapdos and bluesy makes a questionable play here he actually allows me to gain a little bit of differential because of this uh but i'm gonna go for a uh, hidden power race he's actually gonna live because he's max hp uh ev light and he's gonna go down to burn he could have attacked me i don't know what he had as an attacking move i don't know if he had anything to kill me i knew he had a uh, u-turn eq rocks and what i'm assuming is uh roost uh or even defog so uh, i don't even know if you can pair one uh one with the other i'm not sure but 
I know that um, he he more than likely couldn't knock me out, and that's why he didn't go for an attack. Uh, but either way, that was pretty much GG. Luckily, we get the 3-0 victory over Bluesy, coach of the Edinburgh Knights. And uh, yeah, guys, we advanced to, what is it now? A 6-3 record in the GPC with a... What is my uh, differential? I believe I am now plus... Uh, plus eight? P possibly? Well, anyway, uh, around plus eight. So, there are two more weeks left. We are going to be, uh, facing the Tennessee Dynamos, I believe, uh, as well as our arch nemesis <laughs> from the NBA, Johnny, uh, Rise Pool, coach of the, uh, Cologne Conkelders, who's been helping me all season with prep. Uh, he's a phenomenal guy. We help each other out with prep all the time. Jose, actually, big shout-outs to Jose, the shiny Weevil. You guys hear his name a lot on this channel, but big shout-outs. He uh, play-tested with me for this game. Uh, I did win over him. It was a much closer game, actually. I think it came down to a 1-0, and uh, in my favor, I won that game. But if it wasn't for Jose, uh, I wouldn't have been as confident as I was going in with this team. So big shout-outs. And uh, we do have Johnny as a final opponent. Johnny's not doing too well. I think he's got um, a 3-6 and six record, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after this week, or it might even be four and five. I'm not 100% sure, but his chances at playoffs are, are pretty low. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna ask him to throw the game. We're gonna we're gonna play it out. But uh, we got a pretty tough matchup. He's got a Megalopony. He's got uh, Jirachi, with her, which is annoying. Scalipede, which is like the bane of my existence in league format and as well in um, in regular OU play. So. He's got a lot of really annoying Pokemon. He just picked up like really good Pokemon like Mesprit and, and Houndoom uh, for Pursuit Trapper as well. So yeah, that's something we're going to have to deal with. But uh, one step at a time, one game at a time. Uh, we're going to try to get some good sleep this week. Luckily, I am on vacation from my full-time job as well. So uh, I have a little mo bit more time to prep this week. Uh, really putting a lot of thought into the team because this week 10 is pretty much going to make or break it. If we go 7-3, and three, I think despite... Whether or not we lose the last game, we will make playoffs. It's really about placement at that point. Uh, but I really just want to make playoffs first and foremost because I haven't made playoffs yet in anything that I've been in. So this is uh, it's a pretty big objective for me. Uh, six and three is already a phenomenal uh, a phenomenal record uh, going into week ten. Uh, I can't say phenomenal for some reason. <laughs> it's really tough to say really quickly, but uh, seven and three record would pretty much seal up our playoff spot. So. Uh, that's what I'm looking to do next week. I'm looking to pull out a big win. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. Your Montreal, your Montreal Habsols, excuse me. And uh, that's it. Make sure to leave a like down below. Check out my opponent in the description. His side will be great, I'm sure. We had a great game. We talked about it a little bit after, as you can see in the chat on the right side of your screen right there. But uh, And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already uh, for more content like this, more league play, as well as more OU lives, more, more of everything, pretty much. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you later. Ciao.